And now we are blessed to have Apostle Sion Leslie with us today. She is the founder of Axe Community Worship Center, a church for the unchurched. Her passion is to activate, equip, and empower people to serve Jesus Christ and their world and win people to Christ. Praise God. <laughs> Welcome, Apostle Sion. Praise the Lord. Am I on? Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are we excited or are we excited? excited. Amen. To God for the glory. It has been a great, great day in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. All these awesome speakers. I was saying, oh my God, I can't believe I'm nervous. <laughs> After you speak so many times in so many places, you still get nervous. And it is good. Because it shows that you are dependent upon the Holy Spirit. It's not you. You're not going to swing something. You need him. All right? So it's good when I can still feel that. That means, yeah, I need to be dependent on him. So I, I just want to say um, thank you for just having me here just to share with you. You're sharing. You're pouring into me, and I'm pouring him back into you. And so I just want to, you know, thank God for today and what he's getting ready to do. I, I want to say um, for those online, <laughs> I pray that you will be blessed. And the next one, you will not miss it. You pray, if you're in the Hamilton surrounding regions, you need to be in Hamilton where there is a conference where God's spirit is. We need to make time and to come and to sit at the feet of Jesus because something happened tangible in the presence that you can't get online. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So yes, we thank God for these online. But unless you are crippled and bedridden, you need to be here. We have a, a, a senior that's here. How old, is, how, old are, how old is she? Iris. How old is Iris? 86. 86. Iris is 86 years old. And Iris is here. <laughs> if anybody not supposed to be here, it should be Iris. Hallelujah. <laughs> and that's why her strength is being renewed every day. And that's why the joy of the Lord is her strength. And she keeps her mind on Christ. And that is why she is still with us, worshiping and serving God. And so we, we thank God for that. Amen. So let us be like her and come out and just be where the presence of the Lord is. Because where his presence is, like Alicia said, there is a fullness of joy. Hallelujah. And what is the expression of joy? It's laughter. <laughs> Hallelujah. And God's people does not laugh enough. So we really wonder, do we really believe yes. that the joy of the Lord is our strength? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I went there, I preached this message at a woman's um, Bible study, you know, and the Lord gave me a whole different twist. That Jesus was funny. Yes. Everybody wanted to be around him. Yes. Is that true? Yes. He was anointed with the joy of gladness. Yes. What is gladness? It's joy. What's the expression of joy? Laughter. There you go. So let's laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God has God has given me a word that everybody has already preached. So I think I'm just gonna bring a conclusion to yes. the whole matter. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can we just um, stand? I just like to let's just um, build the atmosphere. I know it has been built, but let's just one more time. Because we're talking about worship. Hallelujah. Can I get you on the keys? Absolutely. Drummer, can I get you on the drummer for a minute? And what we're going to do, we're just going to practice everything that has been preached already. That's right. Yes. Pastor Dad talk about presence evangelism. She talked about that worship is the atmosphere of heaven. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so we want heaven atmosphere here. Yes. Pastor Cynthia talk about intimacy. And then Elisha talks about joy. So we put all three together 
And now out of that place, we're just going to worship God with our own song. With our own song. With our own song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's go there. Come on. We love you, God. We love you, we love you, we love you, Jesus. Come on. Come on, love on him. Oh, let's, let us be merry right now. Come on. We love you, we love you, we love you, we love you, we love you. Come on. Your love is so beautiful to me. Come on. Your love is so beautiful to me, God. Your joy is so beautiful to me, Jesus. Your presence, your presence, your presence, God. Is all that I need is your presence, God. I love to be one with you, Jesus. Come on. Oh, we love you, 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 we love you. We love you, we love you, we love you, we love you, God. Oh, we love you today, Jesus. We love you, we love you, we love you, God. None of us, Jesus, and all of you. More of you, more of you, more of you, more of you, more of you. Oh, more, 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 Jesus. Oh, we love you, we love you, we love you, Jesus. You are worthy, you are worthy. So worthy are you, God. Oh, we bless your name, Jesus. him today hallelujah come on hallelujah hallelujah we worship you Jesus you are worthy to be praised mighty God we thank you Heavenly Father God that the heavens are open over the city of Hamilton and over this nation God father we declare together with one voice that Canada is a nation of God Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare that, that Hamilton is a city of God, that all, all, all provinces belong to you, God, and that the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, mighty God, in this nation, and all nations will see your God and bow down. They will bow down to our King and to our Lord, mighty God. As we, the woman of God, arise and our, and our light begin to shine and we begin to take our place in the earth, mighty God. Father, that Canada shall be saved in the name of Jesus. We declare it, mighty God, to principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in our places, mighty God. God, we speak forth your word in the earth, mighty God. You said we shall command a thing and your light shall shine upon it and it shall be so, God. And so we decree and declare whatever words that is spoken, whatever song that is sung, that Canada belongs to God. Hallelujah. And we stand and guard for Canada. Every time we preach, every time we sing, every time we pray in this land, we are decreeing and declaring to principalities and powers that this nation belongs to God. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And so as we build our worship in this nation, God will arise and the enemies will be scattered. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a whole different way that God is getting ready to bring his presence in the earth. And it's going to be true worship. It's going to be through worship. He's going to say, I have to go to Canada. There's a need. I must go to Canada. 
Can nobody stop me? <laughs> I'm on en route to Canada right now because there are people sitting at the well that is thirsty and they need a drink. Amen. So Holy Spirit, Father God, angelic host, we're taking a trip yes. to Canada. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. God is still speaking today. Amen. Amen. And when we begin to understand the heart of God, as we talk about early from a place of intimacy and worship, you will begin to hear what God is saying. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Every message that is preached today, God is saying something. What did you get today? Hallelujah. And so we got to shift our mindset and our perspective of what we think gathering is. You know, it's not about some information session to get, you know, more information or more this or more that. It's about revelation. It's about understanding the time. Know what, is, what God is doing in the earth. Position yourself to move when he said move. To be like the sons of Ishakar who understand the, the times and the season and know what to do. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we as women that are here today in this place and those that are online whose heart is in the right place, God is saying it's time for you to arise. That word arise means to shift from your position and get into a new place with God. Amen. Because why is he telling us to arise? He ain't telling you to arise for no reason at all. <laughs> arise, because there's work needs to be done. But this work that you got to do, you need the glory. You need the heavy weight. You need the heavy presence of God to be on you to do this thing. So we got to shift our mindset where the world have clogged us, where we are so heavy and slothful and sleepy. We can't ever get out of our, our bed to come to a woman's conference. We'd rather turn the phone on because we are lazy. Hallelujah. Can I say that word? Amen. Yeah, we are lazy and we are overfed and we are fat. But we're not influencing and we're not making impact. Somebody say impact. Amen. God is calling us to make impact. That's right. Even at home, everywhere that we go. Hallelujah. So you can see that the gathering place is not the place for impact. <laughs> it's, it's the outside. It's the outside world. It's in your home. Are you impactful in your home? How are you at work? How are you in your community? What does people know about you? What is people saying about you? What is your family saying about you? Who are you impacting? Hallelujah. And so we got to shift your mindset. Right? So when we come into service and on a Sunday, that is easy for Pastor Dad and Pastor Ian because we're just coming together and to declare what God has done Monday through Saturday. Mm -hmm. So worship is high. Alicia don't have to be bringing everybody in the presence. You're already coming in the presence. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And so God want to shift our mindset. Tear down the, 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 the churchy stronghold of what we think church supposed to look like and act like you know on a given sunday in our place of worship they don't know what i'm coming with yes. i don't even know what i'm coming with hallelujah Amen. because sometimes we have the order right that sing to a song da, 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 da. even the enemy knows the order you gotta switch it up on him yes. switch it up we preach first <laughs> we do praise and worship last <laughs> you don't you know what i'm saying we have to be Moving with God Amen. in this season. Amen. Yes. We can't be doing the same thing over and over and over again. Somebody said that's madness. Yes, that's madness. It is madness. And so God is shifting us. It's not even my message. He does it to me all the time. All the time, God. All the time. All the time. Because God wants us to hear his heart. And this is worship. This, his worship is his heart. What is on his heart for Canada? What is on his heart for this city? What is on his heart for this side of the city, the east end? What is on the heart of God for the people? What does God want us to know? Hallelujah. Because sometimes we think that we know it all. 
We've heard it all. That's why a lot of people not at the conference today. Because I've heard it all. What are you going to tell me? You missed it. This is fresh bread. Every day the food is fresh. Even if you eat chicken yesterday, we eat chicken again today. And it tastes different. Hallelujah. When you, you eat toast yesterday, you eat it today. Tastes different. Hallelujah. We cannot, it's dangerous if we come to a place and we started to become, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Comp complacent, but also familiar. And that's what has happened to the church today. We're so familiar with God. We're so familiar with church. We're so familiar with the pastor. We're so familiar. And we don't, we don't understand that these men and women are connected to God. I said to people all the time, now that I'm in full-time ministry, right? When you work in the secular world, you go to work on Monday, you have a set of duties. That needs to be done. Is that true? Exactly. So what's the difference with us? When we get up on a Sunday, and to my kids, oh, mom, where are you going? I'm going to work. <laughs> on a Wednesday, we got work. That's my work. That's right. It is my work. Right? And I take it seriously. So nobody don't mess with my time that I got to go to work. Because you all don't go to work late. So I ain't going to church late. So don't mess with it. Let's get that straight. Mm -hmm. Right? So when we go to work, we get our assignment from Father God as to what he wants to release. Because he knows every person that we will be serving. Because that's what we do. We serve God's people. He knows who needs healing today. He knows who needs to be corrected. He knows who needs a hug, a smile, a word of encouragement. So he downloads to you exactly what he wants you to speak to the people. So it's every day, it's every week that God is speaking. And so we can't miss a day in his presence because you don't know what God is going to show up with. Hallelujah. Amen. And so I think that God wants to get the mind of his children in a place when, when God begins to flow in us in such a way that when you go to work on, on Monday... It is so on you that people say, wow, what's going on? You just tell them, come and follow me on Sunday. Because what I'm operating on Monday, I get it every Sunday. And you could get it too. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Then people are going to want to come to your place of worship. Because something happened when you come into, into, um, into work. Or even when you go home. From, from church and you're not married. You're, you're married, but your spouse is not yet saved. And you go home and you're filled with joy. Even though he's miserable and cranky, you don't see that. You think he's singing a song to you when he's just doing something else. And he can't understand why you're so nice. Then you say to him, come follow me. <laughs> On Sunday, to see why. I'm nice to you because if I'm not in that place on Sunday, I can't be that, that person to you on Monday. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of us are believers in here today? Hallelujah. Every one of us. Yes. So that means God wants you to ignite what's in you to bring about a change. Enough of us is in here to influence the world. Right. We have more than what Jesus have. Right. We have more than what Jesus have. But does God have your heart? It's the heart of the people that transform a nation. That's right. It's the heart that is intimate with God yeah. that changed a nation. Yeah. John 4, 20 and 24, we've been talking about it, the woman at the well. Look at this woman. Came at the well as a sinner. Leave and transform her entire village. Hallelujah. Come on now. Hallelujah. 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 Who's going to show me that? Came as a sinner. Went. That woman arise from the label. Alicia talked about. She arise from that. Shake that thing off of her. Come in agreement with what the, the man says. She didn't know the man's name. That man that have a message that go deep and see beyond her religious really mass and everything that she was trying and speak to the, the, the need of her heart 
And she said, wow. She went back to her, to her, her, her sphere of influence, which was men. What did she say? Come see a man of all men that tells me all things. And because she already had an influence with those men, those men were able to come and got saved. So what happened? When the woman arrives, when you shift from your position and stop allowing man to be your God, those men will get saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I hope we get that revelation. Instead of in my notes, Holy Spirit. When we arise from the position and the label of everything else, he said, she's trying to get all religious, and he said, you have a husband. <laughs> Let's just talk about the thing that, that that woman just feel like they can't do without. Go, go and call your husband. Oh, I don't have any. <laughs> She'll say, you're right, because you are poor. And they didn't even work out. <laughs> the one you have right now, it's still no, not going to work out. So let me tell you what you need. <laughs> and I have what you need. Right? And then she get into this, oh, fathers worship on this mountain. But you Jews, is it that? She's been racist. You Jews, uh, you people. <laughs> You people say that Jerusalem is a place where it is necessary and proper to worship. And Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father nearly, merely in this mountain. I'm reading from the Amplified. Merely from this mountain in Jerusalem. You Samaritans, okay, so you're going to say you people, I'm going to you back. You Samaritans, <laughs> you people do not know what you're worshiping. You worship what you do not comprehend. You do not know what we are worshiping. We worship what we have knowledge of and understand. And after all, salvation come from among the Jews, the very same people that your race is against. That's where your freedom is. That's where your salvation is. Even the world that hates us, they don't know that their salvation is going to come through us. Huh? <laughs> Isn't it amazing how God can get you to even preach to a, a, a group of people that you don't even like? <laughs> or a group of people who don't even like you, you are the answer for them? Amen. That's how God works. He said, a time will come, however, indeed, and it is already here, when the true, genuine worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, in reality. For the Father is seeking just such, such people as these as his worshiper. God is a spirit being, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, in reality. All right? So I have the MSG version. Not what you put in the food, but the message. <laughs> but it's good. MSG makes the food taste good, right? So this MSG <laughs> makes this food taste good, wow. right? <laughs> it said, believe me, woman. The time is coming when you Samaritans will worship the Father, neither here at this mountain, nor there in Jerusalem. You worship guessing in the dark. We Jews worship in the clear light of the day. God's way of salvation is made available through the Jews. But the time is coming. This is what I like. It's about the time is coming. It has in fact come. Mm -hmm. Pastor Dad said that today. It has come. Now is the time. Come on, say, now is the time. Come on, say, now is the time. He said, in fact, it has come when what you are called, again, label. Isn't everything tying in? What you are called will not matter. And where you go to worship will not matter. So he said, no matter if you call yourself Adventist, Jehovah Witness, Jesus only, uh, you know, whatever you are, Baptist, Presbyterian, Anglican, it doesn't matter what you call yourself. It doesn't matter where you go. I only go here. I only go there. He said all of that means nothing. And we need to get that. Amen. Denominations mean nothing to the kingdom of God. He didn't call us to denominate. Mm -hmm. He called us to evangelize. Amen. Not to denominate. Amen? <laughs> right? And so he said, you will not go to worship. It will not matter. It is who you are and the way you live 
that counts before God. Message Bible makes it sweet. Mm -hmm. Tells you, explains it. No matter what you call yourself. People get caught up on titles and you know what I mean? I don't. Took me two years to embrace this call of an apostle. And it was because the man that prophesied to me, he wasn't was going to beat me. He said, the Lord said, as of this day, you will no longer question the apostleship that is on your life. And I'm like, okay, I need to go home and study this thing because I don't want to walk into anything that man has given to me. And so as I went home and I started to study, I'm moving in the apostolic by John Eckerd. Everything that I was doing was already in the book. So I said, okay, God, you got me. Right? And so it is the way you live and it is who you are that matters. He said, believe me, woman. Believe me. This is it. Your worship must engage your spirit in the pursuit of truth. That's the kind of people the father is, is out looking for. So the father is out looking. He's out looking. The eyes of the Lord roam to and fro the earth, looking for someone who he can show himself strong and mighty to. Who is that going to be? Us. Us. Pastor, Jesus. Pastor Dad said, is it, is it, it's me. Yeah. It's me. Look no further, God. Here I am, Lord. Send me. That's what he's looking for today. He said, those who are simply honest, simply and honestly themselves before me in worship, those who are Hot, call that word hot. Honest, open, and transparent. Hmm? I was driving on the road, the Lord said to me, you are fire, you know that, Sian? And I'm like, oh, I don't like that. I'm fire, yes. And I begin to declare, I am fire. And then he gave me the acronym, focus, intentional, radical, and empowering. I said, God, I could take that. Because a lot of times we move in hype. And God is not about hype in this season. It is about substance. Somebody says substance. It's about substance. It is what can uphold you when, when the storm comes against you. Because the storm will come against hype. Hype is built on sand. I just heard that. Hype is built on sand. Substance is built on the rock. And who is the rock? Jesus. So he said, I want my people to be hot. And on fire, honest, open, transparent, focused, intentional, radical, and empowering. And we could even put evangelizing. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, those who worship him must do it out of their very being, their spirit, their true selves in adoration from that place of intimacy with God. Not what you can get from him, but who he is to you. Hallelujah. And that is why the Samaritan woman could not understand what was going on with the Jews. The Jews have, even though they have their stuff that they go through, but they understand, they walked with God. They heard the story of Moses and Joshua and what God has done for them. So they were able to say, this is, it's the Messiah. He's the only one that is deserving of worship. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. And so he was trying to get that to her, to explain. And the reason why Jesus took the time to explain to the smart woman, because she didn't have all the religious stuff going on. She was just a sinner. What Jesus took time to explain to that woman, he didn't do to the Pharisees. Because they didn't care. They didn't care about that. But God, no, if I could get a sinner... That's why he loves sinners so much. Why? Because when a sinner becomes a saint, can't you hold that person back? Amen. You can't hold that person back. Look, look, look at Saul. That became Paul. He dominated the New Testament. Yes. Dominated the New Testament more than those who walked with him. Yes. Hallelujah. Because when God gets the heart of a sinner, real sinner, I'm not talking the one that's, you know, just go to church and just do a little thing on the weekends or whatever. No. You, you wake up thinking sin. You're going to bed dreaming sin. Everything about your life is sinful. God said, you're the one. I want you. Because once I get you, it's going to be that switch. Total opposite. That's true. I used to be like that. I was a bad sinner. 
radical sinner, on fire for sin. <laughs> so on fire, it didn't even work. Because work interfered with my schedule of being a sinner. I just had because I had to party hardy. And so I take that same tenacity and fire. Isn't it amazing now that now God called me to full-time ministry? <laughs> because work will interfere with me serving God the way he wants me to. But it took me 21 years to do that. And even when he said stop work, I'm like, God, you got to be crazy. I hear people talk about that, but I don't know if I'm ready to walk in that. And can I tell you that I'm getting ready to go to work? Because <laughs> he told me, write your resignation letter. And I did that, and I put it down for next time. And so I'm going to work on the night shift. When I get up to go to work, and my back gave out on me. And I could not work. And I never worked. I went back to work. Because God said, okay, <laughs> I'm just going to touch you. <laughs> and he did. And now my focus is on what he wants to do. Because of my intimate relationship with him. Amen? Amen. He said, it is who you are and the way that you live that come before God. Your worship must engage your spirit in the pursuit. That's the kind of people the Father is out looking for. Those who are simply and honestly themselves before him in their worship. God is sheer being itself spirit. And those who worship him must do it out of their very being. Their very being, everything that concerns them, their true selves and their adoration. That's what God is saying. So what is worship? I know Pastor Dad talk about that. I'm just going to go brief. He said, we're going to look at the English and we're going to look at the Hebrew. And English cannot diminish. English language is kind of the lowest form, really, when it comes on to understanding the heart of God and the language of God, what that is saying. And I think that is why he baptized us with Holy Spirit. Because English language cannot begin to tap in what God is saying and what God wants to do in this earth. And so when we want to understand the mind of God, we got to go to a place that says, And words begin to form. Because you already tapped here and you got heaven language, so now you translate it. But you need this language that flows out of your belly, shall flow rivers of living water. And when that river flow, you translate it to people that is not upon that degree so that they could understand. Hallelujah. Amen. So the, the primary Hebrew word for worship is shaka, it means to depress to prostrate in homage to um, royalty, or to bow down, to crouch, to fall down, to humble beseech, to, to make um, reverence, to stoop, to worship. And the Lord impressed upon me, Matthew 15, verse 25, with this Canaanite woman. Jesus is about just going after the Jew, just like us, Christian, church, and the unchurch. So it's like I said, don't talk to the unchurch. Only Christian folks go and preach to them. And here's this unchurched person. Heard about this Jesus that is healing and doing all this great thing. Had a daughter that was vexed with the devil, demon possessed. And she come and bothering Jesus. Jesus, deliver my daughter. And Jesus said, I don't come for you people. And my focus is, God, is us and the Jew. Leave me alone. Think about we talk to somebody like that in the world. Right? They write you up on your Facebook. Talk, oh, God, I can't believe this preacher is so right. But this was Jesus. And the woman continued. And here she said that God, Jesus. She came and she knelt down. She knelt down. She bowed down. She worshipped him. Worshipped him. And said, Lord, help me. She recognized that he was Lord. You see, the problem that we're having today in the earth is because unchurched folks not recognizing Jesus as Lord because they're feeding into their ego. And it's like, as if we are begging them to serve God. And we're begging them, please, let me pray for you, please. Jesus didn't do none of that. And like I said, nobody loved humanity like Jesus Yet he never, he never go around in weakness and tolerance and trying to make everybody happy so that they could come to him. He never do that. 
He lived a life that caused people to want this God, to want what he has, that they have to run him down to say, hey, please worship him. And because this woman worshipped him, said, woman, your faith, not even in the church. <laughs> church people are so casual with me that they don't think that they're so entitled. They don't have to worship me for anything. They just think, God, need, God you don't seem to give it to me or else. I'm not coming to church next week. And I'm not paying my tithes until you answer me. <laughs> we hope God in mind some. <laughs> Excuse me. That's what we do. But, but, but Jesus said, your faith. The other word is um, proscuno. It meaning to kiss like a dog licking his master's hand. You see that? Falling down to kiss the ground before a king or to kiss your feet. And the Lord impressed. Same verse again, Luke 7, 37. The woman, the woman, they call her sinful. If, if Jesus even know who is touching him. Huh? <laughs> As if Jesus didn't know. And the Bible said, the woman anointed Jesus' feet with her expensive oil. She washed his feet with her tears, wiped his feet with her hair, and she kissed his feet. Hallelujah. Amen. That again is a sinner. <laughs> I tell you, sinner know how to get the heart of God. That's why when, when this reformation takes place, watch what's going to happen. God's going to raise up some people that is so radical, that love Jesus in such a way that the church is going to be, where have you been? Where have you been? And they're going to come and they're going to pass us because we are so passive. But well, they're going to come so hungry because they've never heard it before. They've never seen it before and they want it. You know how sad it is for somebody who just got saved yesterday, come into service and can and out worship you, <laughs> out worship you that have been saved for twenty years. Yeah. You have more testimonies of what God has done for you than just their salvation. We should be on a level of worship yeah. that when sinners come in, they're like, "Man, I can't wait to get to that place." Mm. Hallelujah. We're at a place right now that the people come and start to worship and get undignified like David, that we want to sit them down and say, ooh, um, calm down. You don't have to take it easy. <laughs> Jesus is not emotional. Take it easy. <laughs> but when people don't understand, you know, Jesus is not a problem. That woman came and was just, maybe the same woman, bust through the door, another version said. She's crushed the party. And went straight for Jesus and bowed down and, and just leave her alone. I came here, he didn't kiss my feet. He didn't offer me nothing. And this woman, wherever this gospel is preached, you'll always talk about her. Amen. So who is forgiven much, love much. Love much. Hallelujah. Amen. And so you don't have to explain. I don't explain my fire to nobody. Because I know that I have been forgiven much. So I love much. And I want people to get it and to understand that when you worship the God, when you stoop down, when you pay homage to him, that he will come through and all things are possible to them who is a worshiper. Hallelujah. Amen. Because if you believe your worship, right. all things are possible to them. Not just even believe. Believe what? Believe the truth. Because those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So if you're in doubt, you can worship God. Because you doubt that God's going to do what he said he's going to do. You don't believe his word, so your worship is on a low level. Then the next one is um, Simbaya. Simbomaya, something like that, I don't know. <laughs> but to reverence, to hold in awe. And Matthew 7, 28 said, when, when, when Jesus did all the miracles that the people were in awe of his teaching because he taught as one with authority and not like the scribe. Hallelujah. Amen. And the other one is la, la trio, to render religious service of homage. And that is um, in Matthew 21, 19, when Jesus came riding on the donkey. Hallelujah. 
And the people say, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. These are the form of worship. The expression of worship. Hallelujah. And the English language has said, literally means to ascribe worth to something. Some people worship their car because they think it of worth. <laughs> Some people worship their education because they think it of worth. Some people worship their mind because they think they're too intellectual and they're too smart for their own good. Some people worship their dog. Some people worship their children. Some people worship their husband because they see it as a worth of something. And so when you put that word worship with English language, it just kind of lose the whole context as to what God wants. Amen? So true worship begins with a deep respect of reverence for God. It's a frame of heart and attitude. We talk about that again. And the act of expression is an act of proceeding from out of a result of attitude. Hallelujah. So worship is more than singing a song. Singing the song is, is, an, act, is an expression. It's an expression of the attitude of your heart. And that's why not even every song is a worship song. Some song is just some self-song, hype song, just to make your flesh feel good. There's nothing that is expressing the love of God, the worth of God, or who God is to you, to bring you into his presence. Hallelujah. And so the Bible talks about different kinds of worship. It talks about ignorant worship. And Acts 17, 22, 31 talks about that. When, when, when Paul was in Ephesus and he saw all the worship that was going on. How many know that? In our world, there's lots of worship that is going on. But who are they worshiping? Next, next week and ne next month, and there's going to be a great big worship for the world that is coming. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. But well, we're going to counterattack that in the name of Jesus. And we're going to worship the true God and the true king. Amen? Amen? It said, for I was passing through and I considered the objects of their worship. What is the object of your worship? Who is the object of your worship? He said, I've even found an altar in this inscription to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I proclaim to you. So when we, when we proclaim and we preach this Jesus, when you come tomorrow, you should come with a better understanding of worship. Hallelujah. Amen. You start a worship before Alicia touched the key. We need to get to that place that what if we don't have a drama? What if we don't have things? Can we not worship God? Can we not enter into a place of worship? Hallelujah. Without the help of the instrument. Yes, we thank God for instrument. We know that it's a make a loud sound. But what if we don't have the loud sound yet? What are we going to do? Not worship? Not declare our love to him and for him? Paul said, I will sing with my spirit. But I will also sing with understanding. I will worship with understanding. Understanding who he is. Why am I worshiping him? Why am I singing? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Why? That's why when unchurched comes in, they could only praise. They can't worship. And then they get bored and they sit down. Because their spirit man is not ignited. They don't understand why we're getting so excited. For what? It's one hour. You can't stop worshiping yet. I'm bored. Because what? You're not in intimate relationship. But once you're in that place, you cannot get bored. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Vain worship is performance. Matthew 15, 7, verse 9 says, Hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Vain worship. Will worship, second one, is legalistic. With things of indeed I show of wisdom, Colossians 2, verse 23. In will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to be the satisfying of the flesh, these things indeed have an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion, false humility and neglecting of the body, but of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. This kind of worship, it centers into the satisfying of self. And this is the same type of worship that we often have today, which is called the audience-centered worship. Hallelujah. 
not about the audience center. Like Alicia said, it's the audience of one. When you get into worship, you close your eye. You know why we close our eyes? Not religious. It's to shut out all distraction. So I could focus on the one who is and was and which are to come. You know, last night I was at um, Shinnok, um, I call it um, worship experience, not a concert. Because she, she, she's not a performer. She's a worshiper. And um, it's funny, we, somebody bought me a ticket, so we're, we're VIP. Like, she's here, and we're, I'm right here. And I'm worshiping. Like, I was, I was just in this place because I said, God, you prepared this for me to be refreshed. People are just chatting behind me. I got to stop and turn right around like that. Right? Because they come for a performance. I came to be refreshed and to enter into his presence. And there's distraction. So I just turn around as if to say, hey. And that was it. Because you, you, when you're in the presence of God, and that's what I even I, I taught at, at our church when the kids were running around. I tell the parents, I, I, one Sunday we're worshiping and the kids were, and I stopped the church and I said, okay. And I deal with the kids. I rebuke them all. Rebuke them all. Because we have to teach the people how to come into the presence of God. And we have to teach the people how to respect the presence of God. And, our, and, and, and parents need to teach their children how to respect the presence of God. Because children don't go to school and run around like that. they got to sit in a classroom. There's order there. So why do we come into the house of the Lord and there is no order? And we can't bring correction. No, the devil is a liar. And that is why even all form of that is worship. Hallelujah. And that is what we have to teach as well. That it become a lifestyle for us. That everybody know this, we're giving worth and honor to our father. It is a time for the expression of worship. And this is how we express it through singing. So I usually say to my kids when they're younger, if you can talk and you can read, you could sing. It's right up there. So I don't need no talking when we come into church. We do that outside. And so my, I had four children, and, and they're all under the age of eight when I got saved. So I got, I got two when I got saved. One was six, and one was one. And God played a trick with me and gave me two a year after each other. So um, in my walk, I was raising four kids on my own. Even though I was married, my husband was not yet saved. Twelve years later, he came. So I had to walk through all the discipline, all the everything. And to make matters worse, I, 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 the Lord had me to go to church in Scarborough, which was two hours away from Hamilton. Then if that wasn't far enough, then he sent me to St. Catherine. So all my church upbringing was out of the city. Didn't understand why. No, I know he was preparing me because the city didn't have it to give me. But I have to train my children in worship as to what was expected. Hallelujah. Amen. And so it's training. Amen? Amen? And so true worship then. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Am I helping somebody? Amen. True worship. True worship is what God is looking for. True worshiper in this hour, in this time, in this season, we're asking for revival. And revival is not going to come. And it's going to come from a place of true worship. True worship takes you in prayer and travail. True worship is intercession for the lost soul. True worship is presence evangelism. As, 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 as um, Pastor Dad talked about, that is a true worship. Where, where you're prostrate, you, you just lay on your face before God. And you just, God, I'm not going to let go until some Something give. God, you're the God of gods. You're the King of kings. You're the Lord of glory. Our nation needs to see that you are God. You're a good God and that you love them and that you're not mad at them. God, the same way you reveal your heart to me. God, reveal your heart to the youths. Reveal your heart to the president. Reveal your heart to the prime minister. Reveal your heart to the mayor in the city. You're a good God. God, I worship you. God, I love you. I'm not praying from a, from a place of fear and doubt. 
but I'm praying from a place of power. I'm praying from the place, God, where you've already finished the work. And I'm saying, God, manifest your glory in the earth, God. Let us see and know that you're the real God. You're the King of kings and the Lord of glory. And the Bible said, as we begin to praise God, it's like a sweet um, aroma. It is an incense that is coming up to heaven. And the angels are gathering those prayers. And then they are released in the earth to make those things come to pass. We need to get to a place uh, where worshiping God is the most important thing that we do. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That we live a life of worship. The way we treat people, the way we speak to individuals, the way we the way we deal with conflicts, everything has to be a place of worship that we choose to forgive, uh, we choose to love no matter what, that we will not hold anyone captive in the name of Jesus, that we will be first Corinthians 13 in the essence of the worship of God, because love is worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Love is worship. Love is intimacy. Love is knowing who God is because God is love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God want to bring us back to that place. Glory to God. That when we stand up and we, and, and we hit the keys and the drum, even the drum is a worshiping. Even the keys are worshiping. You don't even have to say anything. There's a sound that's been released in the atmosphere. And people walked in, and before anything happened, people have been healed and set free and delivered. Because the worship is so thick that nobody can do nothing, that God alone is just moving. He's touching people in the sea. People are getting filled with the Holy Ghost. People are, cr are crying to God. Conviction is happening even around 100 miles from here. People said, something is happening, and I don't know. I've been drawn into this place. Right. Hallelujah. Right. It is a worship, people of God. That's going to break the heavens. Amen. And he's going to come and set us free. Amen. Everybody's ready for the rapture. Right. You know when rapture happened? <laughs> rapture is like when a woman is giving birth. Oh, the pain has to be so intense and pushed. There, before the tear happened. God ain't coming right now. Because there's no, there's no push for him to come. We're not excited about it. We're not passionate about him. He said he come for those who long. For the appearance. We're longing for his appearance. Amen. We're the one who's keeping him back. Because every time he check, he's seeing all <laughs> the dilation. For 10 centimeters. <laughs> 10 years apart. 10 years, okay, next 10 years he come back. Oh, 5 centimeters. You know what I'm saying? Yes. The pressure, the passion. Yeah, it's not there for him to press through and say, I'm coming for people that are passionately in love with me. They love me more than the world, and they want to. They want out of the world. Hallelujah. But we love the world so much that when Jesus looked down, he could barely see the flicker of light. He could hardly see the blood of Jesus on us, because we look so close to the world that he has to look closely to see. And he said, oh, "I can't come yet. Too much of the world is in them. Can't come yet. Can't come yet. Can't come yet." Hallelujah. He said, I'm looking for true worship. Miriam, I'm not going to read it. Exodus 15, 20 to 22. When they came out of slavery, he, the Bible said, Miriam, get the tambourine. And she gathered the woman. And she began to praise God for his mighty acts. Hallelujah. Amen. And when the angel appeared to Mary, she worship. Oh, my God. Mary said, my soul. Doth magnify the Lord because he looked down on a nobody like me and made me distinguish that as of this day on, everybody will know who Mary is to the point where they deceive it and want to worship her. <laughs> worship. When we had an encounter with a true and living God, when God has done something for us. We, David said, oh, come, let us bow down and worship him. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Let us come before him with an offering. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Our offering is a worship. Our tithe is a worship. And if you're not tithing, you're not worshiping. If you're not giving, you're not worshiping. And you're in vain worship. Vain worship. You're not truth. You're not honest. 
You're not open. You're not transparent. You're not honoring God with your substance. So you're not a true worshiper. You will not build a temple for the Lord like David. Because first you want to build your own house. So you, you are not. So true worship is not just singing to a song. We could get anybody to do that. We could get anybody to play a drum once you have the skills. Anybody to play the piano once you have the skill. True worship is the one who holds nothing back. You want my money, God? It's yours anyways. God, what do, we do? what do we do with it? We use it to buy a micro core bag. Who don't ever serve God? Nike. Who don't ever serve God? Food. That goes in and goes out tomorrow. We will not give an offer, but we can leave here and go to dinner. Yeah, with God's money. I said I ain't buying no candy this month. Because every, every money you spend this month on any form of candy, chips or anything, goes into Satan's kingdom. Think about that. You think about that. So anybody, anybody want candy? For me, I'm not saying for you. <coughs> this is how we get radical. And we boycott what the enemy is doing. My money, that's me, my money will not buy candy this year. No year in November, in October. I'll buy it next month. Because every money that is spent this month, you'll see it on the news, how much money is made in the month of October for Halloween. It's your money, God's money. And then we wonder, I'm in debt. I can't get out of debt. My money's not going far. Why? Because who's your Lord? God said, don't take on the practices of the pagan of the world. But you want to give your money to the pagan? Let them take care of you then. Simple. Obedience, people. <laughs> Even in that, when you know the heart of God, you know how to live. You know, it, the Bible said in Romans 12, verse 1 and 2, what does it say? Present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, so that you, will, you may what? Prove what is good and acceptable and the will of God. Now tell me, is Halloween good? Is it acceptable? Is it the will of God? No, then should I take my money to give what is not good, what is not acceptable, and what is not the will of God? Hallelujah! It is the obedience of the heart people of God, and these are the things that God will test us on. Everybody gets to get their own conviction. And when you're in intimate relationship with God, don't take my word for it. You go in his presence. And you say, God, what do you think about that? And don't listen for what you want to hear and make an excuse that you're going to use it for evangelism. No, the devil is going to evangelize November, evangelize September. You don't need October to evangelize. It's supposed to be a lifestyle that you do it all the time. These are the ways that the enemy gets us to become tolerant of the things in the world. We live in the world. We are not of the world. And you cannot influence whatever you tolerate. You will never influence what you tolerate. You will never influence what you tolerate. If you tolerate darkness, <laughs> you become gray. The light in you becomes gray. Your light is not that bright anymore. It has become dim because you have allowed darkness to come in. Hallelujah. It's not even in my notes. I don't know where that come from. But that's Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's worship, people of God. It's worship, people of God. Everything we do is worship. Everything we do is worship. Where you go is worship. How you spend your money is worship when you're a child of God. Hallelujah. I was in a store. Every time I go away to preach, I think I need to treat myself with something. <laughs> And I was in the States, and I was in one of, one of my favorite stores. And I'm walking through the aisle, and I'm praying, God, help me not to buy anything that I don't need to buy. And I begin to prophesy that. And you know, in that store, I did not buy anything for myself. I bought for some little kids. I didn't spend nothing for myself because I keep praying. Help me not to buy what I don't need to buy. 
help me not to buy what I don't need to buy. Nobody knows that I was praying that. Oh, worship unto God. True worship. True worship. And the place of worship, hallelujah, it's you. You are that place of worship. You are, Pastor Dad talk about rebuilding the tabernacle of David. This is the house of worship. This is the house of worship. True worship comes only from the spirits made alive and sensitive by the quickening of the spirit of God. God's spirit ignites and energizes us to worship him. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. God is so good today. Amen. Come on, let's just worship him for a minute. Let's just worship him. Let's just worship him. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. I'm closing him. This is my conclusion. Hallelujah. That true worship must be in the spirit. That is engaged in the whole heart. Unless there's a real passion for God, there's no worship in the spirit. That at the same time, worship must be in truth and that is properly informed. Unless we have knowledge of the God we worship, there's no worship in truth. Hallelujah. Both are necessary for the satisfying and God honoring worship. Spirit without truth leads to a shallow, overly emotional experience that could be compared to a high. Hallelujah. We don't want emotional experience. Hallelujah. We want substance. Truth without spirit can result in a dry, passionless encounter that can easily lead to a form of joyless legalism. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabbi Sita Rabbi Sata. And the best combination of both aspects of worship results in a joyous, as Alicia said, a joyous appreciation of God informed in scripture. That's why we must know the word. You cannot effectively worship God without the word of God. You got to know what the word said before you can worship him. You worship him based on the knowledge, based on the understanding, based on the revelation and who he is. Jesus said to Peter, Peter, who do men say that I am? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And unless you know who he is, you cannot worship him effectively and how you're supposed to do to get the results that you want. Glory to God. The more we know about God, the more we appreciate him. The more we appreciate him, the deeper our worship. Hallelujah. The deeper our worship, the more we glorify him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. David said, let us come down and bow down in our heart and worship our king, for he alone is worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want you to read Isaiah 40. You go home and read that. It talks about the majestic, the greatness, and the power of God. Who is like God? That stretch forth the heavens like a curtain that measured the water in the hollow of his hand. There is no God like our God. He alone is God. All other gods are idols. Can you play that song for me, please?